and welcome back to the Give and Go. I'm your coach, Reno. So here's my boy. Soltero. What's up, y'all? We got some U.S. men's national team action as the USA goes on to defeat Jamaica 4-2 today and 5-2 on aggregate. You got a Christian Pulisic brace. You got Timothy Ware scoring bangers. Yeah. And in my opinion, the best performance under Pochettino so far. We finally have a performance that we can celebrate a result that we can be proud of, man, because it was getting grim there, bro. I'm not going to lie. As a USA fan, this has been a pretty bad year. Going into the Copa America, it was just looking horrible. I low-key had to gaslight myself <laughs> in, hopes that, <laughs> did, in, in hopes that we would have a good summer. Spoiler alert, we didn't. You know, we had a disaster of a Copa America. And honestly, man, the friendlies that ensued post Burhalter were horrible. Yeah. And the last note we set off last month was maybe we just need a competitive match. First one in a Pochettino. And honestly, bro, first leg in Jamaica, I wasn't that convinced. If anything, I was very nervous for the second game because all things considered, we got a little lucky in Jamaica. You know, we got a really nice goal from Christian Pulisic feeding Ricardo Pepe. It was a beautiful goal. But... Damari Gray had a really bad penalty kick uh -huh. that Jamaica could have equalized in that moment. And Jamaica had a stellar second half where they just yeah. couldn't finish their chances. The USA were lucky to go away with a 1-0 result. But finally, in St. Louis, the USA put in a complete performance. 4-2. We let in a couple goals, but they ultimately were very good finishes from Damari Gray. But it was a performance where we dictated the tempo of this match. We had majority of the possession. Jamaica were scrambling, especially in the first half, and the majority of the game in general. And we killed them, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. We, we, just, we were scoring for fun at a certain point. We probably could have even had a little bit more goals if we were sharper in general. So this was finally a complete performance performance and honestly the first complete performance i've seen in probably over a year yeah i mean hey let's not forget the mexico match as well was part of that terrible year that we've seen the usa go mm -hmm. through so that's why i was interested to see how do they respond after what was a ultimate shaky international break last time around well they respond with two victories and yes i agree that first game in jamaica was questionable although i do give them credit because I saw a stat that Burhalter never won an away game in CONCACAF, Damn. which is just crazy. Uh, so at the end of the day, getting a 1-0 result is always going to be a tough thing to do in CONCACAF football. But then the difference, the quality, the difference in quality showed today hosting the Jamaicans as they defeated them 4-2. I mean, this game was completely dominated by USA. Yeah. Jamaica was chasing shadows the whole match. And I do want to praise the USA. But real quickly, bro, this Jamaica team. <laughs> Please has to be one of the most frustrating teams to coach in world football, man. And I say that specifically because Hal Grimson, his body language on the sideline is that of a man that is frustrated, trying to figure out why is it that when his players play outside of Jamaica, they can always play at such a great and high level. But the moment they step foot in their own goddamn country, all that quality goes away, man. We see Jamaica ultimately implode and not live up to the standards that I think they are capable of living up to in the sense of at least making this matchup competitive. You lost 1-0 at home. You have a chance here to at least keep it tight in this match. But ultimately, they didn't because the USA was just too damn good. Yeah, I think Jamaica is officially cursed. And that curse might be just living in a beautiful country, as you're saying, bro. Because <laughs> God damn it, man. The, the mentality, I agree. That's the only thing that I can say as to why Jamaica are not consistent. I do think it's a focus mental situation that Jamaica have going on. There's no other way I can describe it. Because as you said, and as we've seen for the last several years, Jamaica will have one very good game and then one very mm -hmm. bad game. Mm -hmm. It is a recurring phenomenon with this Jamaican side. And we were hopeful. Totally. We were hopeful starting last year going into the Copa America that these European coaches would change that mentality because the players are all, honestly all relatively the same. No Michael Antonio this time, uh, the reports where he lost his passport. 
Just, are you kidding me, bro? That's the mentality. Are you bro. kidding I, I, me? I don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody I'm lost done, it. Bro. It was either the I'm Federation done. themselves or he himself, man. And that's why he ultimately didn't play tonight that's in St. Crazy. Louis. It's crazy. And then we had the whole Leon Bailey fiasco in the yep. summer. He's back. Weird. Mm -hmm. But but he is back. Mm -hmm. That could be helpful for their World Cup endeavor at the very least for the next two years. But just in general, man, the inconsistency kills me because we see them, for example, in that first leg, you know, at least show promise show signs that they can play against a yeah. very good CONCACAF team but then we have the second leg where they just got completely outran outplayed and outperformed they got smoked they, they got, got smoked. smoked out there and I'm gonna be smoking that ganja we're, too bro. we're gonna be smoking that Jamaican pack man <laughs> that's what we're gonna do because let's move on over to the USA I have some questions here with this victory what do certain things mean to start I, I noticed Pepe Pepe's back. Pepe's back, dude. He's got six goals and 11 appearances in the Eredivisie. He's obviously playing the Champions League as well. He's had a good start to this season, club-wise. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Pochettino's seen that. He's brought him back in. Balogun still hasn't really figured out his goal-scoring drought that started last year. He's also dealing with a couple of injuries. I think this inclusion made, made a lot of sense. Yeah. And not only that, but we saw Pepe get a very good goal in that first leg, a brilliant finish, and then also scoring today in the second leg. So... Honestly, I, I, I'm, I'm cool with this. Happy over Balogun right now? That's the thing. I just hope we get a really good competition for that number nine spot, whether it's going to be between Pepe and Balogun. Maybe Josh Sargent, when he's healthy, is able to also fight for that spot. Haji Wright, of course, could definitely fight for that spot as well. But I'm happy with the performances we saw from Pepe getting both starts against Jamaica. I hope he can continue this form both at club level and for the international team. Yeah. But I, I, I think the biggest takeaway that I got from both of these matches is we're finally seeing Pochettino's tactics come to life and the good news is he's watching AC Milan matches because we got to see in both games a central free roaming creative position for Christian Pulisic and I had noted watching Milan this season that you know Pulisic doesn't have that same explosiveness that he once had earlier in his career but he's just as effective if not even more when he's able to start on the wing and drift inside or start centrally and drift either right or left and we got to see him in that central role for the USA and we saw some attacking midfield play that, that first little slip through ball in that first goal yeah. to Ricardo Pepe and then we got to see Pulisic make a central run and receive a beautiful delivery from Weston McKinney in the second leg and then finish it with a brilliant half volley so we got to see already the fruits of putting Christian Pulisic in a central position facts. no facts and the way Weston McKinney fed him today I think everyone's on the same page now embracing this match scoring the first two goals the yeah. second one was a mixture of an own goal but still yeah. it was a beautiful play that shout out Tanner Tessman with the uh, with um I'm, I'm losing my word what's the name of someone who megs himself in the process what's the worst of soccer word for that yeah uh, well, I just got off a flight what what's the word it's it's a dummy he dummied it there it is yeah, 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 yeah. god there go. damn it's bro. late man it's late it's late a beautiful dummy yeah. beautiful dummy that then Pulisic picks up Strikes it, hits a player, it goes in. Great goal right there. And this is honestly a dangerous sign that we're seeing now because going into the second leg, after what I saw in that first match, I was questionable about, about USA retaining the Nations League title, a trophy that they've won three years in a row now and they've been the only team to ever win. After that first leg performance, I was like, you know what? This might be the first year where it's actually wide open. Canada mm -hmm. is on a really good streak and Mexico prior to playing Honduras, had just defeated the USA in a friendly, maybe they had a shot. But this performance, with Pulisic playing this type of role, yeah. is gonna be really tough to stop, especially if everyone buys in, if everyone's able to match up to the physicality of the opposing team, like how they did against Jamaica. I think this still looks like the favorite team to win in this tournament, the USA, if they continue playing at this level. And having more faith, more trust, in seeing Pochettino's tactics kinda you know, work themselves out I think things are looking good now after this specific match. But I think, yes, the biggest sign is Pulisic. Having that role and having that freedom, that's a bad sign for all other teams in CONCACAF right now, man. Yeah, it's so fun to watch, too, because... Pulisic is at a point in his career where he can truly influence and change games. The more he touches the ball, the more he's going to be able to do that. And it's perfect when he's in that central position. There's still a, a couple of concerns, though, that are very evident when we see the USA play. And I'm going to go to the defensive line here. And I'm looking at those two center backs, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark McKenzie... 
I'm just not fully convinced. And considering that we're going to be playing against South American and European competition at the World Cup, I can't have him be the liability. I don't fully trust him because in both matches against Jamaica, he had some very shaky moments, man. And again, that's just not going to cut it against elite offenses. And then I look at Tim Ream. Dude, he's going to be 39. He's on the way out, man. He's going to be 39 at the World Cup. I'm not doubting his mind. I'm no. not doubting his, his ability to read the game at a very high level. I'm doubting, unfortunately, his body mm -hmm. and his relationship to father time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when Anthony Robinson goes forward, it's brilliant, but there's a massive hole. And the problem is... And it's a good problem to have. Pocatino likes to have his midfield press high up. So you have situations where Musa, McKinney, and honestly, even Tessman go very high up if we have a lot of possession. If Robinson goes up too, there's a massive hole in that left back position. It's up to Ream to cover it. But again, I think against elite offenses, man, we're going to get caught out. We, I, I, I want defenders in their prime, man. Yeah. I, I, I need more physical defenders. And McKenzie is that, but he's mistake prone. Yeah. And I think that's where Chris Richards, when he's healthy, we're going to need a prime, healthy Chris Richards at the World Cup. I think he could fulfill that role, but it still leaves that second center back position uh, just kind of up in the air for me. I mean, the, the, the unfortunate part here, bro, is that it's up in the air. I don't know if there's a solution. Yeah. Like, who who, il who else is there? If there's anyone out there, open tryouts, bro. We need a youngster, someone at a good age right now, that can slot in and not have to be the best center back on the team, but be a good pairing center back for Chris Richards, who can be the leader of that back line. It's unfortunate because I see the level of play that the fullbacks are doing, Scally and uh, Anthony Robinson. I mean, I think they're great, bro. Yeah, they're I really good. do. And I think they match the level of the midfield and offense. The weak link is those center back pairings. Who's it going to be alongside Chris Richards? I think that's where the question is. It's just, I, I don't know. Who, I don't think we know. It yeah. might end up being Tim Ream at 39 years old and just basically putting all your your chips on that uh, panning out. Yeah, uh, honestly. So I hope he just gets the best body care that Charlotte can provide him for the next two years, man, because we're going to need him in tip-top 39-year-old no. shape, brother. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, my second concern, this is similar to kind of the number nine battle we might see between Pepe, Haji, Wright, and Balagoon is it is that third midfield position, that defensive midfield position that was occupied by Tessman in both matches against Jamaica for these fixtures. But I want to see a healthy competition between Tessman, Cardoso when he's healthy. Although Cardoso has been cursed lately yeah, when yeah. he plays for the USA. He either Weird. doesn't show up or he gets injured like he did in that first match. So that's a little concerning, but I hope he can be healthy. He's been playing fantastically for Betis this season. And if he could just translate that over to the USA, I think he could really help us out. And there's also the question of, does Tyler Adams come back from injury and come back with a force? We saw him when he, when he was at Leipzig play incredibly well in that box-to-box -box position. So I think there are there's still some midfield questions that need to be answered. And I think Pochettino is getting the right ideas because he is calling up the guys that are in form right now. We just need to see more game time and more rotation from that midfield. Yeah. And I'll highlight up top, Timothy Weah, mm. who, if he had a Wikipedia page, he'd be like one of those uh, great conquistadors where one section is the fall of Timothy Weah. <laughs> and there'd be a whole essay there yeah. after what happened at the Copa America and how ultimately he ends up being the culprit for what happened. You know, starting off the avalanche that was of just bad results for the United States. But then there'd be a following section that says the resurgence, the resurgence. And it's one that's in the making right now, yeah. hopefully, because we see him score an absolute beauty of a goal and be very dangerous this whole game. I thought he had a great match overall. And I liked what I saw from him just mentality-wise. I heard his interview after the match as well. He seems a lot more positive because I remember after his mistake, he was really hard on himself and rightfully so. But I think that's a big piece, at least mentally and also just on form. Pulisic needs wingers that are on fire as well. He needs yeah. them to step up. Wea did not do that at the Copa America. If he can continue this level of form, if he can continue being that guy, that right-hand man for Pulisic, um, some Shaq Kobe type shit, yeah. that's another weapon that I think works really well for the U.S. offensively. So just want to shout out him because that goal that he scored was ridiculous. Ridiculous <laughs> placement, catching it on the volley. And I want to see more of it. I want to see more of it. I want him to lift his level up and continue giving the USA really good results. Yeah, and just in conclusion, I'm very excited 
for the potential that this 442 or 4411 that Pochettino is employing. I'm very excited to see the potential. What needs to happen for the next two years going into the World Cup is we have to approach these new tactics with intensity and an intent in every single match. Because overall, I still think we're a bit disjointed. Oh, yeah. You know, Just still learning exactly what Mauricio Pochettino wants from this side. That can be fixed if we just approach every single international break as if it's club level. You know, Just approach it with an insane intensity. And I do think we can pick ourselves back up with Pochettino. Yeah, I think what I saw against Jamaica was really positive. The only part that I'm leaving open is... It's easy to apply your philosophy and tactics against this Jamaican side. I think most teams could actually do that as well if they're competent. So now the question is, can he do it against a team of Canada's level Mm -hmm. or a team of Mexico's level if they even make it that far? Maybe it's Honduras, brother. But can they do it against a better opponent? That's part of this journey that we're on. And then lastly, a quick note on a game that I didn't watch, but I think you might have. So I want to mm-hmm. know what happened. We have Panama knocking out Costa Rica in the quarterfinals, but it looks like it actually got kind of tight towards the end. I'm seeing red cards. I'm seeing two <laughs> goals from each team in the second leg in Panama. What happened here with Panama going through? Yeah, it ended up being a really tight affair in Panama. But low key, man, I, I was kind of expecting this. Costa Rica ended up getting kind of unlucky because they had a handball goal that was disallowed allowed obviously it was the correct call and they also scored again to take the lead that would have been Mm. but it was offside Mm, 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 so mm. Costa Rica get very unlucky they gave absolutely everything that they could but I think that's the whole point here Panama a year ago thrashed this Costa Rican side thrashed them to get into the Copa America yeah and now they're having to rely on margins to beat the exact same team. And Panama themselves are the exact same team. So yes, they do squeak by against this very feisty Costa Rican side, but I, 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 think, I think Panama have peaked. Yeah. I, I think they peaked in 2023 going into 2024. They'll have the Copa America to remember by getting out of the group no. stage, but I thought both legs... The first one in Costa Rica, even though they did win, and especially in this game, I thought they were very sloppy, man. And again, it is the exact same 11 that they've been using under Christensen. I think that I think they've the chemistry has just run its course because they're going to need to tighten up like crazy. The good news is this is their third consecutive Nations League semifinals. True. So it's not like they are a bad team. I just think they are on a bit of a decline. Damn. Yeah. Because that was what I liked about Panama was the potential, the ceiling that they promised. Mm. You're saying we don't have a ceiling anymore. The roof is off. That's oh, no. A- Wait, maybe. No, the roof is. It has been hit. <laughs> it's been hit. And now, the, now, they're, yeah. now gravity's taken back over and they're falling down. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem here because I, I feel like that loss against Colombia and the quarterfinals of the Copa America might have jump started this uh, downfall, if you will, losing 5-0. They didn't lose to USA in a friendly. They didn't lose to Canada in a friendly. And then, yeah, when I was checking on the score because I was on a flight, I'm not, I didn't miss this match <laughs> because I'm anti-Panama or anti-Costa Rica. I was on a flight, but I was checking the scores, and I kind of was surprised to see that Panama was you know, dominating this Costa Rican yeah. side who I still haven't seen that much promise in. So they've regressed a little bit. They've yeah. regressed a little bit. And I'll have to keep up with them in their course of the World Cup because they will be one of those teams vying for qualification I, we're just going to have to, I don't know, gauge the results and see if they can go back to their winning ways and winning in dominant fashion. Yeah, and this opens up the doors for, you know, several other Caribbean teams like Jamaica. You know, this this helps that Panama is getting weaker. And it also helps teams like Costa Rica because mm-hmm. they almost beat them on the road. It was 2-0 the Panama, bro, and they let Costa Rica back in. And this also helps teams like Honduras, mm. right? Yes, so sir. Yeah. I think the battle for those last CONCACAF World Cup spots is just got a little bit tighter with this Panama regression. Panama to the semifinals, folks. Let us know what you thought about both these results as we have two teams qualified to the semifinal of the Nations League. And we got a big reaction coming tomorrow Oof. with my precious Mexico down 2-0, as well as Canada, too, trying to make it to the semifinal. Till tomorrow, guys. Peace.